I've just finished a review of a pair of powered speakers and I thought to myself, as you do, why? Why would you have them? Who would they benefit? What are the pros and cons of having powered speakers? So I thought I'd look at that issue in this video. The whole notion, the concept of the powered speaker is one of compromise because they are full of compromises. The problem is that you have technology in a powered speaker which is crammed next to each other. It's stuffed and that's not a good thing. You have a single chassis, it's stuffed full of all kinds of different pieces of technology sitting right next to each other. That's not a good thing. Why? Noise. Say you just bought yourself a new hi-fi, okay? And you're not sure where to put it, how to put it, how to arrange it, that type of thing. What I would not recommend is for you to do what I see on social media all of the time, and that's this, where you have uh, somebody with an amplifier, and then they'll take a CD player and they'll plunk it right on top of the amplifier, not on a separate shelf, right on top of the actual amplifier, okay? And then they might get their turntable and they'll put it right on top of the CD player. So you'll have these boxes, one on top of one another, not separ separated at all, just bum, 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 bum. That uh, will cause noise. And when I say noise, I'm talking about the sort of noise, often high frequency stuff, but other types of noise as well. And this noise can be generated from power supplies, capacitors, cables inside the chassis. You get it from vibration and other type of stuff outside coming in, wireless noise, mobile phone, vibration from the house, all this stuff. All of that creates high frequency noise. Noise which is, uh, you don't really hear, you don't really, uh, your brain tunes it out really. You only really notice this stuff when it's gone. And it sort of affects delicate stuff. It, it, in the actual music itself, it damages sound quality, but it does it in, in its subtle ways. And it affects, as I say, the delicate, fragile stuff. So what I mean by that is uh, reverb tails. So if you just tap a cymbal and you hear that, that after effect, that reverb tail, noise can affect that part. Or if somebody's just plucked a guitar string in a quiet studio environment, and you're hearing that decay of that guitar string being plucked, again, that sort of thing. Other, other elements, lots of little indications that you get, emotional indications, like somebody really putting some effort in strumming a guitar. You can really hear it with, a, with a low noise recording. You can hear the effort, like somebody's really putting some effort into that strum. Lots of little indications like that can be masked a little bit, veiled a little bit with noise. And it's a bad thing. I mean, you still hear the music, of course, you can still recognize the song and all that jazz, but if you sit and listen, noise can just harm those little fragile things I've just mentioned. Things, you, you, the soul of the music, I suppose, is what I'm getting at here. So you want to avoid that, and to do that, you isolate. So rather than having your turntable and your, your CD player and your amp and so on on top of one another, what you do, you put it on a proper shelving system. Not on a coffee table, because that's just as bad, really. Even next to each other on a coffee table. You don't really want that either. You want, a, you want everything separate on their own shelf, ideally. Now, powered speakers, they go against all that. They're completely the opposite. They're completely crazy in terms of the design. Because why? Because, well, look, you've got a speaker and it's a vibration monster, as I say. So it's doing its thing, vibrating the hell out of itself. And a designer of a powered speaker, what does he do? He gets this, he gets this amplifier, which again is full of noise, and he stuffs it inside the cabinet of the speaker. Crazy idea. Absolutely crazy. Some people go further, especially modern powered speakers. They'll have a Bluetooth module. You want to do a bit of streaming, don't you, from your phone, your tablet, or whatever. And they'll have this noisy, and that creates noise on its own, believe me. Bluetooth module, you force that into the same chassis, okay? So you've got your speaker, you've got your amplifier, you've got your, your little Bluetooth module, all creating noise and vibration. And there are some crazy people out there 
who will then get a little phono amplifier. This is the thing that connects to your turntable. And they'll stuff that in there too. I mean, it's completely balmy. Phono amplifier is such a delicate, tiny, sensitive piece of engineering. This is the little tiny specialist amplifier which, which, which amplifies the tiny, tiny signal from a stylus, from a groove. It's such a delicate, fragile little operation. You know, you want to treat it carefully, but no, no, no. These guys stuff this delicate thing right in there. So you've got this chassis, this powered speaker, full of vibration and noise and mech and there. You don't want to know. Well, you do. On the face of this, in theory, you wouldn't want to know. That's the downside. That's why you wouldn't want a powered speaker. And if you had the choice, if you had the space and the money and it didn't matter, I would always have separates. Always. So, powered speakers, bad idea? Well, no, they're not a bad idea. They're actually, there are actually several good reasons why you would want to buy a pair of powered speakers. Why? Okay, so, let's, set, well, let's talk about the big one first, shall we? Money. Powered speakers offer tremendous value. You're looking at a, a, a speaker and you're basically getting a free amplifier in there and, like I say, on many occasions, a free streamer, which is your Bluetooth module, and now, often, increasingly, a free phono amplifier in there. It's all there. It's bought. It's paid for. It's given to you on a plate. It's done. So, in terms of money, the specialist items in this one chassis are already there. So you've done that. And so in terms of actual paying out cash, getting some music from the turntable or, or, or CD player or whatever, you will save yourself a whole heap of cash. Because don't forget, if you buy each of these things separately in their own chassis, you know, you're talking, I don't know, at, at least say a couple of hundred pounds for a good quality amp, maybe 180, 200 pounds for a separate pair of speakers. Um, for a streamer, you know, 100, 150. Phono amp, again, 50, 100 pounds. That's quite a lot of money when you're adding all this up. So a pair of powered speakers give you value. If you've got a family, you have a big family, you have lots of kids roaming around the house, you have cats and dogs, chickens and zebras, well, who knows. You're not going to have much space. You're going to have, I can just guess, little tiny little area. So you've got a powered speaker, everything's in this one speaker, it doesn't take up a lot of footprint. There's not much acreage involved in this thing, is there really? So you've got your speaker and then maybe a turntable or speaker, a CD player or whatever. So in terms of space, a great idea. Related to that, you may have a second system. You can use, you know, you, you, may, have a, you may have a main hi-fi. Powered speakers are really ideal for a second system in a spare bedroom. Students. Uh, would obviously benefit too in terms of you know, the little small digs that they may live in or, or <laughs> probably most of London because everybody seems to live in a small flat in London nowadays. So little bed sit, small flat. Again, if you haven't got the space, powered speakers are really useful. Then there's the sort of related thing about installing all of this. Normally, if you have uh, an amplifier and you're plugging the amplifier into speaker, speakers or you're plugging a streamer into your amplifier, you're struggling with, with cables and, you know, well, that cable goes into there and, and which socket does this go into? You have all that issue. In addition, you may have to buy separate cables. There's another expense. So all that's been done for you with a powered speaker. You don't have to find cables. You don't have to worry if they've gone into the right sockets. That's all done, dusted, ready to go. You switch the powered speaker on, you're done. You're sorted. So that's another good reason. Some powered speakers, not all, but some of them are very useful for near field use. What do I mean by near field? Well, literally speakers that you use near to you. And the best example I can give you of that is when you have a pair of speakers connected to a computer you're sitting at a desk, you've got your screen in front of you, left and right you've got your speakers, and they're literally near to you. 
So you've got that sort of little computer music setup, which is very useful. Now, the thing is, often you may have to buy those separately. Now, if you have a pair of powered speakers, which are good for a listening room and an office desk, you're sorted. You've saved yourself some more cash. Ideal. So that's the main reasons. They're the main reasons, rather, that I would say you should look seriously at powered speakers. What I'll do, I'll put some links below so you can have a browse. Um, I've done some reviews. They're on my website. I'll put those links underneath for you so you can check it out. Tell me about what powered speakers you have. What do you like? What would you like to buy? And also, um, uh, if you do comment, please remember this is a family channel, so no swearing. Keep it polite, and I will see you next time. So, see you soon.